Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, make it straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound and while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, in these ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to share some basic information for yourself to develop a very good foundation with your own spiritual practice. So for that, you need some kind of basic understanding regarding the practice you do. Because otherwise, you may give up it very easily. When you don't know what to do and how to do, what will happen by the time you don't want to practice meditation. So, that's why that every day we try to bring different, different uh, informations and examples and uh, stories and uh, to, to try to help you to, to understand it in a different, different ways. Because when it comes to med meditation, today there are so much informations and sometimes it not help us to understand what is really meditation? Because when it comes to meditation, people have different, different ideas and thoughts related to this conventional development. They have more thoughts related to their day-to-day -day life. And they try to, to bring more other thoughts to develop their life with the, the conventional ideas. But when it comes to this tranquility meditation and vipassana meditation, the very authentic Buddhist meditation teachings, it is about cultivation of the mind, not the cultivation of the thoughts or not the cultivation of the ideas. So cultivation of the mind means that you not bring anything from outside to your inside. It's more bring the purification to your inside mind. So why we need that purification? Because on the way in this samsaric journey, what happens knowingly or unknowingly, we used to accumulate a lot of unnecessary thoughts to ourselves. Just imagine your house. Imagine that uh, your environment today. There are a lot of things around you unnecessary for you. 
there are a lot of things valuable things but if you look very carefully there are a lot of things it is not necessary but it is there so our mind the same there are a lot of unnecessary things inside us and hold it to our life so when you accumulated thoughts even though it is unnecessary what happens knowingly or unknowingly that thought to start to develop to something else so then by the time your life goes slowly start to go into different different directions which may no need for you so through the meditation bring the purification means you get you slowly start to release these thoughts and purify yourself and mainly releasing the greed hatred and the delusion purifying and getting out from the greed hatred and the delusion so the greed hatred and the delusion most of time happens with interference of the thoughts so that thoughts mostly related to past or the future so when you have the thinking pattern or the the process related to your past or the future things or maybe with the help of the past and the future what happens somehow somewhere it is start to to develop the greed hatred or the delusion so through the meditation we bring our awareness to the present moment so when you are capable to develop that your awareness with the present moment what happens you slowly start to get out of the greed hatred and the delusion because in the present moment there is no greed or hatred or the delusion so as example in this very moment what do you experience when you have the direct perception it's not going to bring the greed hatred or the delusion so if you are capable to first enter into that level and then from there if you are capable to expand the duration so by the time what happens that your mind is start to purify in that purification your awareness going to become sharp and clear and out of that your experience going to become more and more accurate so when the experience become more clear out of that clarity what do you understand what you experience bring some kind of wisdom not related to thoughts it's not about kind of like a thinking and understanding so this meditation this tranquility meditation and the vipassana meditation take you to that level your mind has a certain way to to experience things without help from the the thought so that's why get into that level in the beginning we have to come to the tranquility state and from there we go to the vipassana level that mean critical analytical understand so when you experience something you more go deeper and recognize how things come to be as they are so in the very first level we understand things as it is and from there we go to how it came to be as it is so th those are the two different pillars we develop but in the beginning we have to know how to settle down with our body and how to to practice with our mind so that that knowledge is very important so there was a young person and he start to read about meditation and thought i want to find a good teacher then what he heard he knew there is a monk in the himalayas in high mountain areas and he is very good for meditation 
So then this um, young guy thought, oh, I want to go there. So he used to work in another country. Then two years, kind of like he start to work and earn some money and settle down his all the bills. And now he feel more comfortable. And after two years, he had some savings and he left to Himalayas. And then he went to certain villages and start to hear that ask about this monk. And the people told, oh yes, there is a monk like that. And that monk is very old. And even we don't know how old he is, but there is a monk, we all heard about it. But the thing is this, that whoever go and meet that monk, and after that, when someone meet, the monk start to leave that place and go to another place. That monk not going to stay in the same place. So we don't know that how many people went and visit that monk and we don't know now in the, the, which location. Because if the, someone visited, then the monk leave that place. So like that. So this guy was helpless. But still, that he know that monk was somewhere in the, the Himalayas. So what he did? He start to to walk and, and with the greater determination to find this monk. And he used in the beginning, you know, he used many, many animals to travel. And it was days passed by, weeks, months, you know, he, still he didn't give up. And then somehow he went to a place to place and then finally he came to a place and everybody and the uh, he met some people and that people told, oh, we met that monk last month. But after we met him, he left that place. So now we don't know where he is, but so far in this level, you know, from above this level, somewhere he is there. So now he come to very closer. So then with the greater determination to find the monk, he went to the highest level of the mountain. And then he found her. there was a little hut. And he was so happy. And he, there was no any doors or the windows, just the little hut. And he went inside and he knew somebody used to be there, but uh, few days, few weeks, and uh, no one used that day, place. So then he was so disappointed. He knew that maybe the monk was used to be here, but now he's not in that place. So now what to do? So then finally he thought maybe he died. Maybe he, he, he end up his journey. Because otherwise, this is the highest, and I should, if, if he's alive, I should find him. Now he give up. He give up and he was so tired. And uh, he kind of like, uh, and um, hopeless, no, nothing, you know, that the, the desire to search disappeared. He give up everything and settle down in a place. And in that place now, he now in nowhere to travel anymore. He settled down in a place and he, he his body start to feel so comfortable. And the mind has no desire. Be remember that you know, two years he worked and earned some savings. And then after that, he had a travel, he traveled place to place, place to place, looking for this monk. But now the mind, you know, get out of that. And now he felt kind of like a so relaxed, this desire to find this monk is gone. And the body comfortable and the mind comfortable 
and he settled down and now you know this very cold this uh, in the higher mountain area this very cold the wind came and he felt so comfortable with that he just start now the first time you know after many years this is the first time that he start to experience the wind that that the go through his body and then the, the, the sun and the warm his body and he sat down and he felt so comfortable with his sitting so in that very level in that very moment that what he felt he deeply connected to that and the mind slowly enter to the tranquilite state so that in that tranquility state he went deeper 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 and what happened and then from there that the desire disappears and the the any that the all the five hindrances slowly release from him and then deeply he found that some kind of transformation happening inside so in that very moment he found he is he start to heard that somebody walk towards him and even he didn't have any kind of like a, you know intention to open his eyes but still he knew somebody is come closer to him he slowly opened the eyes and he saw the monk very old monk in front of him so the monk a smile and then the, the monk ask how you feel so then the, the, the boy start to have a conversation and uh, so from there no that no nothing about meditation that conversation was few words and the smile and it is not a kind of like a verbal communication and the both start to communion and that the kind of like a connected to each other so this a story is a, it's a very important whoever practice meditation because that deeply when we have so much needs it is start to kind of like a heat inside us and boil inside us and it it start to bring the unbalance and unrest inside us so we all go through a kind of like a journey looking for something but guys remember yourself you you know you know need anything from outside that everything inside that you can't go and look something and other thing is sometimes we think this the mind is something this unchangeable and the mind go and find or oh, the mind go here and there are kind of like that there is no such a thing called unchangeable or the solid concrete mind or consciousness that the whatever you experience that all experience come out of the the moment of accumulation so that but the thing is when the, when there is a desire when there is strong desire it make us heavy and it feel kind of like a solid that solidness a start to to push us from this point to next point so that create a kind of like a journey and sometimes we helpless and that's why you know the naturally sometimes we start to react move but when it come to tranquility meditation knowingly this and settling down yourself with the moment of experience is a greater skill if you can develop
because we always look for something. We always try to get something, do something, or go towards something. But this everything is within you. So when it comes to meditation, one of the things that you have to understand that uh, we we so careful about the body. So when it comes to the posture, when you develop the tranquility state of mind, remember one of the major important things, give up the idea about the body. So that's why Every day when we practice meditation, we determine ourselves, this is the last moment of our life. So that will help you to detach from the, the, the bodily comfort. Because if you think about the body, if you try to, to protect the body, work for the body, you can't develop tranquility state. Because the, then the mind starts to interfere with that. As example, just imagine, there is a soldier go to the war. In the middle of the battlefield, if the soldier start to think about his own protection of the body, so what will happen? He can't do his best. Then out of that, what will happen? The fear rise. And he start to do the, the resist and look for the protection. Then anymore, he can't fight. But imagine why in the world that the, 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 the suiciders, terrorists become so successful. Because they don't care about their, their body. No. That's why they go to the target. No one can stop it. No one can stop them. So the thing is this. And rather than killing someone, why you can't use the same technique to develop yourself and bring the transformation, transformation to ourselves? Because if you're really into tranquility state, not to think about the body, no one can stop you. Maybe you will attain to enlightenment. So that's why. So the one of the thing is that we, even sometimes we practice meditation to develop the body, protect the body, keep the body healthy or thing, shape the body or kind of like that. It doesn't work. So then when you develop the tranquility meditation before we go to the vipassana, the idea about holding the body or the, the protecting the body or thinking about the body, get out of it. Just go towards the primary mental object. That is one thing. And another thing is, and sometimes we too care about the pain, the physical pain. Oh, I hurt my back, I hurt uh, the, the knee pain, the shoulder pain, and then you protect it. You always and keep the posture and keep pillows and find a, and, then, and then you find the comfort. But as you know, there's no way. Maybe you stay five minutes, somewhere else will start to pain, you know, give the pain. So it is more than the body, it is your mind. Because the thing is this, when you bring too much comfort to escape from the pain, the pain going to become stronger. But when the day comes for you to give up the pain, it doesn't matter, you, you die yourself with the pain. You keep focus to the primary mental object, that is the day the pain going to disappear. So otherwise, because the most of time, the physically, whatever the physical pain, of course, there is a pain, but 
the the physical pain not going to be solid it always moving and changing as you know this body entire body energy so what is the nature of the energy it always moving so if the 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 body the energy is moving how the pain can be solid no so that's why contemplate the pain observing the pain you will recognize the pain always changing arising exists for moments and disappear but how about that every day we say oh you have a shoulder pain now you have a shoulder pain so then it become a mantra for you or you have a back pain so the mostly the back and the knee and so that's kind of things you know we always condition ourselves oh i have this pain because of that when i going to practice meditation i need to do this way that way that condition mind protect the pain so then so the rather than tranquility meditation you practice maintaining the the pain so when it come to meditation by the time you know of course we have pain and sometimes in it, it, it is very difficult to handle in, in the beginning but by the time you bring your next level of your practice so get into the tranquility meditation five minute don't think about the body don't think about the pain no matter what even you die that five minute you go into settle down with the tranquility meditation five minute enough so then you will recognize that that it it's not going to bother you anymore so then and other one is one of another thing is this timing and even when we come to meditation and practice meditation deeply settle down after 5 minute 10 minute and this time is somewhere in our head and try to maintain our practice so if you practice that whatever tranquility state and go into meditation in deeper level if you want to go into the next level of your practice get out of the idea of timing so in the deeper level this time is very conventional is man made that but when it come to deeper in your mind with your with your deeper recognition no time so go into that level in your practice don't hold it to timing don't depend on timing so whatever the moment you go into directly tranquility state the primary you hold it to the primary mental object and whatever the time period that you can do you don't depend on timing or you don't calculate the time or oh, this should be 5 minute 10 minute 20 minute no you practice of course there is something you have to do and then by the time you you there there is a, the the wisdom that in you or oh, you have to do that and then you will get out of it and you will do that there is a deeply that your mind know and then your thoughts so go into that level don't don't depend on the timing so those are the three things there are many other but those are the three things in the beginning and when need come to your day to day practice and slowly try to get out of the one is the body and don't look for the bodily comfort or don't depend on that don't give too much attention to the body or the pain so whatever the pain in your body and don't try to maintain your meditation out of that pain or another other one is the timing don't depend yourself with the timing because deeply what happen it is start to unrest and unbalance and you somewhere deeper in your mind you hold it to something so then you can't get into the total that the the freedom inside you 
So if you are capable to develop little by little, knowingly that the, the, the hindrance that we, we the, the block ourselves, that where we hold, and then slowly you release that and you went enter to the tranquility state. So from that tranquility state, so by the time when you have the very clear awareness with that, you can develop the, the vipassana level. So that is a kind of like a, through the practice you have to come to that understanding. So when it comes to vipassana level, it is deeply not about that anything outside. It's deeply your own inner experience. You recognize how it come to be as it is. Within your form, feeling, perception, volition and recognition. And out of that all, finally you recognize this awareness is the most important part. You are deeply this mind is the most important part and even it is not solid. It is not a kind of like an unchangeable concrete moment of experience. It is not the mind go here and there kind of like something that unchangeable exists inside us. You recognize this mind also moment by moment. It's come out of, happen out of our experience. So that's the day you get out of from this experience. So it is a process, but you have to go step by step, step by step. But remember yourself that you have to keep that inner freedom and at the same time keep cool inside you. Don't boil out, out of your own inner practice. Out of your spiritual practice, don't bring the heat to inside you. So that is a kind of like a wisdom you have to have in day-to-day -day life within your own practice. So with that, let's get into to practice now a little bit. So your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. Bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes to yourself and say so Pateva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So if your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again and settle down with the sensation. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathing, breathe out, three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. Do nothing extra. Just recognize it through the sensation.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small. Visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart forward, visualize yourself and send it as a light and expand the capacity to your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself May all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha me sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati a buddham puje mi dhamman puje mi sangham puje mi. Adhaya imaya pati pati a jati jaravya di maranam ha paribunjisami. Idam me punya kamanga sabakaya vahang ho tu sabadukka pamunchatu. Listen.